Grass is not often the main subject of a drawing, but it's a common one. And sadly, not an easy one to capture a sense of realism with. Three things are needed, I think, for drawing grass that looks realistic. The first is careful observation, more than we're naturally inclined to give it. Secondly, a preparedness to explore different marks for the grass under different distances and circumstances. And finally, patience. It may take a little more time than we were prepared to give to just grass. This grass now, we're looking side on at very close range. It looks very different to the previous shot looking straight down on the grass where we were seeing all the grass in the shot pretty much from the same distance. The sides just slightly further away. But now we're looking at it horizontally rather than from the vertical. And now we're starting to rise. And so the way the grass looks changes as well. We're no longer seeing large blades of grass. Clearly we're looking down across the tops more. And the further back we go, we're looking more across the tops and less down into the space between the blades. In other words, the way grass looks changes hugely according to the angle that we view it from. It also changes according to, has it been mown? Is it all at the same level? Or is it having a shaggier effect? If we look right into the distance, it really is just green colour. There's very little surface texture to see. But the surface texture we do see as we now move back towards the front increases and it also changes how it looks. Now, these are the visual effects of the grass from certain viewing positions and under certain conditions we need to be able to find marks for in our drawing. There is no technique to do the grass over the whole scene because the way it looks, the visual effect that we see changes according to the distance and the lighting and other circumstances. So let's put all of this into practice now in this sunny garden corner. Now, we don't normally make grass the main event and it's not really the main event here, but it's the effect of looking a long way across a yard in the sun. So there's not a huge amount of shade and shadow in the foreground in the grass because of the amount of sunlight. But in having grass really close up down the front and then stretching visually the effect of distance by the marks we use to create the grass, we do give the sense of a long expanse of lawn in the sun, which amplifies the sense of a sunny chair in the sun. So it works really well. So I start with a 0.3 millimeter pen and I start with the largest grass because I want to establish what my largest marks are going to be. Now, this is where I'm going to do the most detail. So I need to be still cautious in what I do. It's also where I'm going to make the most marks for grass in the largest way. But I still don't want the eye to be riveted to a lot of ink down here. The foreground grass is meant to attract attention that we then slide up get a sense of the distance we're looking across the grass because of the effect we've created with the way with the marks we've used to represent the grass to the chair to the sunny spot to sit at the edge of the garden. So I start with the largest marks because then I know that all the marks I do further up the page so to speak further back in the depth of plane need to be smaller and you'll notice a couple of times what I do is I finish a section and then I actually go up maybe a centimetre, a centimetre and a half in this case and I establish another, not horizontal line, I, I want to try and avoid that, but another kind of line of marks that I deliberately make smaller and then I work down because if I work up with large marks trying to make them smaller, 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 if I don't end up making them small enough quickly enough, I've distorted the visual effect I'm trying to create. I find it far more accurate to do a line of the size I want higher up in the drawing, further back in the plane, and then as I come down, I can increase the size of those marks to eventually match 
the highest ones that I'd drawn up till then. Far more easy to get a nice gradation of the size of marks. Now, this is where I have to work really hard at trying to get a random feel. And random is very hard to create. If I'm not careful, I put so many marks down, regardless of the size, they mess up with the effect because they create too much attention, too much detail at the point where I'm wanting the grass to become less and less important so that we slide quickly along the width of the garden and get to the sunny corner that we're going to relax in the sun on. So that's that's what I've, I've got to keep doing. Now I'm still using my 0 0.3 millimeter pen but I will switch to a 0 0.2 millimeter pen shortly. So the part I'm doing now is kind of like the last bit of, of detailed work, but I'm still deliberately using shorter marks and creating lighter values than I created down the very bottom because the, the darkness of our values does also help create the effect of depth and shadows that are closer are darker than shadows that are further back, even under the same conditions. So the effect of distance as the grass moves further back is really important. When we look along a horizontal plane, it's actually foreshortening that we're seeing. If, if you know perspective in, from architecture and streetscapes and how as a building moves away at an angle, it appears to narrow more and more and therefore the things on it appear to narrow more and more as it goes further away. This is exactly the same thing visually that happens on the ground, except instead of the plane being vertically, it's horizontally. And so what we're actually seeing is the visual narrowing of the grass as well as it's getting smaller. So I need to bear that in mind too, that any bands of, of effect I'm drawing need to narrow as they move further up. And it becomes this exponential thing they narrow more and more and more the higher up I go. And when we get to the end of the drawing, you'll see how little, how few marks I've done as I get closer to the chair. In fact, you know, I don't know whether I've done it just a few too many dots or not, but I didn't want to have a big white gap because I didn't want the feeling that somehow this was two separate drawings. I wanted to leave, if you like, a trail of breadcrumbs to lead us from the grass in the front right across the sunny expanse of lawn to the chair in the garden. So I've got my 0 0.2 millimeter pen. And again, you see, I go further, further up or further into the plane and, and do a line of just dots and try not to do too many. And then I work down from there back to the highest point I reached previously where I'd done my last similar line, but with presumably more dots slightly larger, maybe even a few little dashes. Now I need to establish this sunny corner. Now you've watched this in real time up till now and I go back at the very end and do a bit more grass which is in real time. I adjust my foreground grass once I've got the values of the distance done. But now we're just switching to time and a half. So if you want to watch this in real time, use that cog icon and reduce this speed by 50% and that should bring it back to real time. So I'm just, just working on keeping this chair nice and simple. I don't want to draw anything further back here in too much detail because that will make it feel like it's closer than it really is because the closest things are the things we see with the sharpest edges, the most detail, the brightest colors, if we're using color, which is the foreground grass. So I want to strike that balance between, well, there are much darker shadows up here and yet they're not close. So I still want to leave the sense of this is further away. And there was some, some sort of challenging effects to try and create the the light and shadows under the netting. It would have been easy to leave the netting out and just to have put a shrub there, but this is how we learn. We look at a visual effect in our reference and we think, how can I create that effect using my pen? What marks will create it and how do I put them on the paper? Particularly how many do I do? What thickness they are? All of those things 
to create the feel of what I'm seeing, the visual effect of what I'm seeing. So I do the chair and I do it with a bit of a lighter touch than, you know, I haven't darkened it, the dark bits to the darkness that I think I'm going to have at the end because, well, I may not judge them right. But if I do the rest of the scene and then I can make the final adjustments, which is, as I was saying a moment ago, what I did, what I did with the very foreground grass, I, I didn't bring it to its, if you like, final um, amount of working because I knew that once I'd established the detail up the top and the darker values up the top, I would have a better sense of judging exactly how dark to go where down below. But keeping keeping a sense of random and of particularly in the grass as we move up, try not to get a predictable pattern of where the lights and darks happen. In many ways, drawing grass, the grass itself, the marks we use for the grass, often appear and therefore create the same effect as hatching. So we're playing with that as we go. But the principles with foreshortening, whether it's grass or whether it's the facade of the Musée de Louvre, the closer it is, the darker the shadows, the darker the values, the more intense colour, if we have colour. If you look at this, you'll see that the greens are more intense closer than further back, although they become slightly more yellow. It's partly to do with the moisture content of the lawn, but it's also a duller yellow in comparison to how green the, the green is down the front. But we, things are foreshortened, so they narrow. We talked about that. The banding of the grass has to thin as it moves further up. And generally we see, we see less and less when we look at the grass at the very furthest part of the yard, it's really an expanse of, of value and colour rather than, rather than of shape or even edge. There's very little we can see there that can be really represented with a pen. And as you can see, I, I, I'm, I'm doing the sort of final dots now um, and, and marks. I do want to create this trail of marks just to help lead the eye and establish the link between the grass and the scene at the back. And so now, still in time and a half, we're doing the dark value, which is important because it's going to make the chair stand out. Now, I had to do a fair amount of hatching on the chair because I wanted to kind of give an indication of the, the weaving of the cane. And also the chair sits in front of a, of a white patch, of, um, value-wise, a very light value, the netting over the vegetable garden, the summer greens that grow there that we can pick fresh for our salads rather than buy a whole lettuce that we use a little bit of and then have it turn to bog in the bottom of the fridge. And so I know I'll be able to accentuate the form with the silhouette and I'm also going to be able to strengthen the shadow on the left hand side of the chair on the arm where the, sh well, the shadow but the shade but again I won't know how intensely to darken that until I've got the darkness behind done because we read values off other values so it's hard to appropriately judge how dark to go in one patch of our drawing independent of the other patches. So we often end up bringing the, the values darker and darker and darker over the whole scene, bit by bit, all at once. These are skills that we learn in the second half of the drawing. So if we only ever get halfway through our drawings, we don't learn, we don't develop, we don't get to practice this fine tuning of the lights and darks that happens at the end. But the really important thing with that is not to go too far. In a moment, I'll go back to fine-tuning the grass down the front at real time. And that's where I have to be really careful, not just to go splash, splash, splash with my marks, because I have become more confident and faster with making marks at this stage of the drawing. But I want to make sure that I don't fill in all the preserved spaces on the paper because that can happen very quickly. And with a pen, of course, once you've filled them in, there's no going back. So, 
and now the shadow on the grass up here. You'll notice the shadow that I use for under the chair, I do with vertical lines, not horizontal ones, because that captures the feel of the grass, I feel. One principle of hatching is we hatch to reflect the underlying form that the hatching is on. And even when it's a shadow, the form is the object that the shadow is on. And in this case, it's little vertical blades of grass. So, but I don't want to make them too high because we can barely see the height of any blade of grass. Well, we, we can't really. But we're creating the effect, remember, at this stage. So it's what we can do that will create the effect. So now I've got my pen. I'm fine-tuning now my values. So just creating a few little darker patches, hopefully in a randomized way. Please hit the like button if you found this helpful. And why not check out my Drawing the Effect of Details playlist if you haven't seen it, where I do this sort of subject of overwhelming detail over and over again in different in different subjects, whether they're architectural or natural. The underlying principle of seeing first and then drawing the effect of detail is the same. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Look, I've got to say, I'm very surprisingly delighted with this little scene. It's a great little reminder of our backyard. So why not have a go drawing it yourself? I'll post this photo on my channel community page. But of course, whatever you end up drawing, whatever marks or effects you use or create, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.